In this video you will learn what a current voltage characteristic is and how it can be used to describe the behavior of electrical components in a circuit. You will learn here why Ohm's law is only valid for constant resistance values under all circumstances and you will see why something called differential resistance is sometimes better to describe the behavior of certain electrical components. And we will also look at the current voltage characteristics of, of some of these components such as for example a resistor, an LED and something called a PTC resistor. My name is Andreas from the Phyllis Engineer and here we go. Now let's start with a brief definition of what is meant by a current voltage characteristic. If you look into one of the more famous German scientific magazines, one of them is called Spektrum der Wissenschaft, you can find this definition here, which says that such a current voltage characteristic is a curve which represents the dependence of electrical voltage on the current in an electrical or electronic component. And in order to understand what's, what's meant by this, let's quickly recap some uh, points which we talked about in previous videos. The first is that under certain circumstances there exists a linear relationship between current and voltage and resistance. And this relationship is described mathematically by the famous Ohm's law, which you surely have heard about, and Ohm's law relates current and voltage and, character and, and resistance in, an, in a very easy and straightforward way. However, second point, this law, Ohm's law, only applies if the resistance is constant over the current. Which means that if you look at the current voltage characteristic of such a component, then you will find that it's going to resemble a straight line, which we will look at in a few, in a few uh, seconds. And this straight line has a constant slope. It's going to uh, be constant over all values of the current. And this constant slope resembles the resistance of this component, which is described by this current voltage characteristic. And if this is not the case, if you see a change in the slope of the current voltage characteristic, then you have a component which has a so-called non-linear relationship between current and voltage. And then in this case, the resistance value alone is not sufficient to fully describe the behavior of this component. If you have an ohmic component which has this linear relationship, then the only thing you need is the resistance value and let's say the current, and then you will be able to compute uh, the voltage drop over, over the resistance which is described over the resistor which is described by the resistance value, then only a single value is sufficient. If you have a nonlinear relationship between, uh, between current and voltage, then a single value alone is not sufficient. In such a case, you need a current voltage characteristic. And this is what we're going to look at now. On this slide here, we will talk about the current voltage characteristic of ohmic components. So, for example, a, a resistor, which you might have seen before. It's this small device here. And to show how the current through such a component changes as a function of the applied voltage, we can use this wonderful linear relationship between voltage and current. This is a linear curve. This is a straight line and the component which is described by this straight line is called ohmic. It's an ohmic component. And this means that if we measure the voltage drop across the component and if we measure the current flow through this component and we supply this with a, um, with a constant voltage source, for example, then we can adjust several values of the, uh, of the voltage drop across the resistor. Let's say we increase the voltage um, um, by, by, by fixed values, then you will see that uh, the resulting current flows um, resemble a straight line which is described by this current voltage voltage characteristic. So you only need to know the resistance value R1 and let's say the voltage drop and then you can perfectly fine use Ohm's law to compute the current flow through this component. This is a linear current voltage characteristic. Now the beauty of this linear relationship is that you can tell a great deal from, uh, from the current voltage characteristic, for example this one here. Um, it has several uses. Uh, one of the uses is if you pick um, a voltage drop at this point, then you can easily deduce the resulting current flow. If you have two values, for example the current flow and the voltage drop, then you can compute the resistance value. And if you only have the green line and no other component, then you can still compute the slope of the curve and the slope uh, resembles um, the resistance value of the associated component. So only from this current voltage characteristic you can deduce a lot of information on the circuit in which the component 
is placed. And if you uh, look at it from a more mathematical perspective, uh, you can look at this representation of Ohm's law, which sa says that uh, the current is the ratio of voltage drop over resistance value. You can reshape this equation a little bit to resemble the equation of a straight line, which has uh, the slope of the curve and also uh, the point where it intersects with the y-axis, which is represented by B. And we can easily see that um, as it is uh, um, a straight line emanating from the, from the origin, that B is always zero, uh, that the voltage drop resembles X, that the current flow resembles Y, and that the inverse resistance resembles the slope of the curve. And you can easily, if you know this, you can easily compare two resistors with each other. For example, this resistor here um, has um, um, a smaller slope than this resistor uh, at the bottom here with the blue curve. And you can only by looking at the curves see that the resistance value of the blue um, component here is smaller than for the green component. And you can look at it from a mathematical viewpoint, but you can also look at it from a rational viewpoint, because when you increase the voltage, let's say from zero to this value here, uh, denoted by U1, then you have a larger current flow for the blue curve, which is at I2, uh, but a smaller current flow for the green curve, which is I1. So for the same current, uh, for the same voltage drop, um, the component R1 gives you a smaller current flow than the component R2. So by comparing these characteristics, you can easily uh, tell two devices, two linear components apart. Now there are some components for which the resistance uh, does not obey this simple linear relationship. And this means that, uh, for example, um, if you increase the current flow through a component, then it might change its resistance value. The resistance might go up because the component heats up and then the resistance increases, or it might even go down depending on the comp component which you pick. But in any case, it's not going to stay constant. And for such cases, you can still apply Ohm's law but you have to be careful about the resistance value which you are currently observing. Let's say you have a component for which you have increased the current flow um, a lot compared to a previous measurement, let's say by 200%. And uh, in this process, the um, component has um, has increased its resistance value. So you have to observe the new resistance value for this current flow as compared to the uh, resistance value for the previous current flow. R is now a function of I. The resistance is now a function of the current, which means that this law still applies. However, um, as R is now a function of one of its components, it cannot be as easily used as before. And one solution which you um, can find in practice very often is to assume certain um, certain um, areas of the uh, current voltage characteristic for which you assume a linear relationship. You can say that, for example, in between the voltage uh, voltages um, denoted by u1 and u2, you can roughly assume that the relationship um, follows a, a, a linear equation. The same can be can be uh, assumed, for example, for this uh, for this area between u3 and u4. It has a steeper slope. However, you can approximate it with um, with a uh, with a straight line as is, as is shown here uh, indicated by the green curve and for these sections the blue one and the green one you can compute the so-called differential resistance it's a resistance which is only valid for a very narrow area of the current voltage characteristic but for this area um, it can be assumed that um, the relationship is, is roughly linear, which makes it easier to treat such uh, components. At least, for example, if you guarantee in your um, circuit, for example, that um, the voltage drop across your component will not uh, be lower than U3 and not be higher than U4. If you can guarantee this, then you can assume in between these points uh, a roughly linear relationship. Of course, this might be different if the current voltage characteristic uh, looked otherwise, but uh, in this case here, uh, if you can live with some deviations here at the, at the fringes of this interval, uh, then you can make this assumption and, and use it uh, to simplify the equations which you have to solve. Now, before we conclude this uh, video here, let's look at some typical uh, components which have a nonlinear 
um, current voltage characteristic. On the left you can see a positive temperature coefficient resistor which um, changes its resistance value with increasing current flow and this is for example to be found uh, in a thermometer for example to monitor the temperature changes in a room. In the middle you have uh, a light emitting diode which has a very characteristic curve which we also have um, seen um, in, in one or two videos uh, before and this curve tells you that um, in the beginning of increasing a voltage drop nothing, nothing much happens we almost have no current flow at all and then in a very narrow margin in a very narrow interval the current flow increases dramatically depending also on the color and type of the LED. So for a very slight change in the voltage drop you have a very strong increase in current flow and this makes it very dangerous to use a light emitting diode um, without any protection for example by a linear resistor in which we which we put in series to the light emitting diode um, but this is a topic for for another video but uh, if you use this in an unprotected manner and you increase the voltage drop too much this will uh, burn out and be be, uh, be destroyed and I will make a video on how this looks um, in the future but uh, for now you need to remember that if you integrate a light emitting diode into your circuit you need to tread very carefully in terms of the voltage drop which you allow for the diode to happen. And on the right you can see another diode, it's not a light emitting diode, it's called a Zener diode and this is used in circuits for example for voltage stabilization and voltage limitation and one interesting, um, one interesting, uh, one interesting characteristic of this um, Zener diode is that it's uh, conductive in the same way as the light emitting diode. So, um, for, for a rather large, interval, a rather large interval, nothing much happens. We almost have no current flow. And then in a very narrow interval, the current flow increases strongly. But unlike the light emitting diode, the same happens in the opposite direction. So you have this area in the middle where nothing much happens. And then also in the negative um, voltage uh, area, you have a strong increase in, in current flow into the opposite direction. How this can be used is a topic for another video, but you can clearly see from the from, from the characteristic here um, that it's um, absolutely non-linear and you have to um, for example by using the differential resistance you have the possibility to dissect it into three areas this might be a roughly linear relationship in this interval here then you have another linear relationship in this rather large interval where where no current flow at all is observed and then you have a different a third relationship in this area here and you might use a differential resistance or three differential resistances to describe the behavior or to approximate the behavior of this Zener diode here. That's all for now. If you have any questions related to this video, don't hesitate to drop me a comment down below in the comment section. Also, if you have any suggestions for future videos which you want me to make, please also leave a comment here. I wish you a nice day now. All the best and see you next time here on The Fearless Engineer.